Hello everybody, this is Talon with another nutrition tier list, where I'm going to be breaking down all the most commonly eaten options in any given food group and ranking them based on how nutritious they are and how good they are for your health. And with the recent release of the nut video, I feel like no one is really surprised that this is what follows. Beans are probably the most prominent member of the legume family and are a staple of diets around the globe, being especially critical in plant-based diets. They're often the underappreciated backbone of the nutrition world due to being a cheap, accessible and effective foundation for building plenty of meals around. Beans can consistently be relied upon to provide a variety of essential nutrients including fiber, vitamin B1, folate, copper, iron, magnesium, manganese, phosphorus, potassium, zinc, and plant-based protein, albeit an incomplete one in most cases, meaning they do not provide sufficient quantities of all essential amino acids. However, this can easily be remedied by pairing them with other plant staples like seeds, nuts, and rice. Because almost every item on this list is a solid source of these nutrients, I'm only going to point them out when there's something special related to them. So if you're unfamiliar with any of these, I have a video that I'll link right here going over all of them. Unfortunately, beans also consistently come with some drawbacks in the form of anti-nutrients, substances found in the given food that are shown to either inhibit the body's ability to absorb certain nutrients or have been linked with certain chronic diseases. The main four found in beans being lectins, proteins that bind to carbohydrates and don't necessarily get along with the human digestive system, they've also been shown to interfere with the absorption of calcium, iron, phosphorus, and zinc. Oxalates, compounds that bind to calcium and are linked with an increased likelihood of the formation of kidney stones. Phytic acid, which can inhibit the absorption of calcium, iron, magnesium, and zinc. And tannins, which in addition to limiting absorption, have been shown to potentially lead to liver damage or certain cancers. Fortunately, cooking and soaking your beans has been shown to greatly reduce their anti-nutrient content. Thus, all nutritional information in this video will be assuming they are cooked as well as unsalted. Taking a look at the tiers for this video, we're going to be comparing the nutritional benefits of each bean against any health risks or shortcomings that they may have and ranking accordingly. To spare both you and I a very boring video of me just putting everything in the same tier, I'm going to have to grade pretty tough taking into account everything from macronutrition, micronutrition, anti-nutrition, antioxidant concentration, and all the other finer details that really separate one bean from another. But rest assured when you see the final list, everything I put in the B tier or above is what I would consider to be healthy. All numerical nutritional information will be based on 100 grams of the individual food, both across this video and this series for the sake of consistency and ease of comparison. One last thing, if you enjoy these tier lists, or at the very least find them helpful, I encourage you to subscribe because there's plenty more on the way. And with all that out of the way, let's finally file our favorite fuels for flatulence. Adzuki beans are average in regards to calories and macronutrients, and are middle of the road micronutritionally as well. They're the best source of zinc on this list, which is used in DNA creation and maintaining a healthy immune system, and are among the best sources of potassium, phosphorus, and copper. They contain a wide variety of antioxidants, including polyphenols, anthocyanins, and flavonoids, which combat damage caused by free radicals and are shown to have anti-inflammatory effects. Adzuki beans are also shown to improve heart health, aid in digestive health, and reduce the risk of type 2 diabetes. Adzuki beans do contain notable amounts of all of the anti-nutrients I mentioned in the intro, though they are shown to have a lower concentration of lectins than most beans. Still, make sure to cook and soak them thoroughly. Overall, Adzuki beans are average for a bean and will do the body good. I'm going to be placing them in the B tier. Baked beans are usually canned navy beans covered in spices and sugars. They're actually lower in calories than you might think, notably trading protein and fiber for added sugars. They also perform poorly compared to most on this list in regards to micronutrition. Baked beans do contain a fair amount of manganese. They also contain polyphenols, which have antioxidant effects, and they are shown to support gut health. The main problem is the sugars. About 7.8 grams per 100 grams of added sugars, typically in the form of brown sugar and syrups, that are shown to provide little or usually no health benefits. Instead, they're shown to lead to weight gain and an increased risk of heart disease, type 2 diabetes, and tooth decay in excess. Baked beans also tend to contain additives like cornstarch and caramel color, which could chemically alter the body in negative ways. If there was a silver lining to all this, it's the fact that they are typically prepared before canning, reducing their anti-nutrient content. But in the grand scheme of things, this is pretty minor compared to the bad stuff we intentionally shoved in the can. Baked beans are far from the worst thing you could eat, but let's face it, if you're eating beans for health purposes, this is not the right choice. Thus, I'm going to put them in the D tier. 
Black beans are an average caloried bean and find themselves somewhere in the middle based on their micronutrient contents. They are notably one of the better sources of fiber on this list, which aids in the digestive process, and among the best sources of vitamin B1, which helps the body generate energy from nutrients, and magnesium, which regulates muscle and nerve function and aids in protein, bone, and DNA creation. What really separates black beans, though, is they have one of the highest concentrations of antioxidants on this list, mainly anthocyanins that are shown to reduce the risk of type 2 diabetes. Diabetes, and a variety of flavonoids including catechin, quercetin, myrosetin, and camphorol, which are shown to have cancer-fighting and heart-protective benefits. Black beans are also shown to lower blood cholesterol and manage blood pressure and blood sugar levels. They do appear to be on the higher end of oxalates with notable quantities of the other aforementioned anti-nutrients, so make sure to cook and soak accordingly. But nutritionally, black beans are a cut above your average bean and have earned themselves a place in the A-tier. Black-eyed peas, also known as cow peas, are a lower calorie bean with an average micronutrient profile. They're among the best sources of folate, which helps to form DNA and RNA and is involved in protein metabolism. They're also the best source of molybdenum, which is used to process proteins and genetic material like DNA. Black-eyed peas also contain a fair concentration of antioxidants, mainly flavonoids that help the body fight off diseases. They're also shown to support weight loss, promote digestive health, and enhance heart health. Black-eyed peas do appear to contain a lower concentration of oxalates than most beans, but a slightly higher concentration of our other three anti-nutrients. Cook and soak accordingly. Black-eyed peas are healthy but average in the bean world. I'll be placing them in the B tier. Cannellini beans, also known as white kidney beans, are a mid calorie bean higher in protein and average in regards to micronutrients. They're the best source of potassium on this list, which is needed to maintain normal fluid levels in the body's cells. They're also one of the best sources of iron, which is needed for hemoglobin and myoglobin, which is responsible for carrying oxygen throughout the body. Cannellini beans are higher in polyphenol antioxidants, which combat oxidative stress and protect against chronic illnesses. Also, white beans like cannellini beans are among the highest in resistant starch, which is shown to boost digestion, prevent diseases, and aid in weight loss. Now, white beans like cannellini beans are shown to be the highest in lectins, but the lowest in tannins. Obviously, still cook and soak them. Cannellini beans are great and deserve to be a staple of many people's diets, though I feel like they're right on the cusp of being an A-tier bean, I'm going to put them in the B-tier. Chickpeas, or garbanzo beans, are one of the highest calorie items on this list due to having one of the higher carbohydrate counts. They also have one of the best micronutrient profiles. They do contain about 5 grams of sugar per 100 grams, which is the highest on this list not including added sugars. Chickpeas are among the best sources of manganese, which is needed for the formation of bones, connective tissue, and certain hormones. And copper, which aids in iron absorption and is good for bone health, as well as being among the better sources of phosphorus, iron, and zinc. Chick Chickpeas are also shown to regulate blood sugar and digestion and help protect against chronic diseases and improve mental health. Chickpeas are shown to have a lower concentration of oxalates and a fair amount of our other anti-nutrients. They should still be cooked and soaked. Chickpeas are a notch above your average bean nutritionally, and I'm going to be placing them in the A tier. Cranberry beans are an average calorie bean, higher in protein and fiber, with an average micronutrient profile. As I said, being higher in fiber aids in the regulation of the digestive process. Cranberry beans are also one of the best sources of folate, which helps form DNA and RNA, and vitamin B1, which helps the body generate energy from nutrients. Cranberry beans are also shown to lower the risk of cardiovascular diseases and type 2 diabetes. They're shown to be lower in oxalates and tannins than your average bean, but should still be thoroughly cooked and soaked. Cranberry beans are a fine choice that I'll be placing in the B tier. Edamame are immature soybeans and are an average calorie item on this list and one of the best sources of protein. It also has the highest concentration of micronutrients on this list. Edamame, and all soy products for that matter, are what's known as a complete protein, meaning it contains sufficient amounts of all essential amino acids. It's also among the fattiest items on this list, mainly consisting of oleic acid and linoleic acid, which are shown to have a neutral to positive effect on blood cholesterol and heart health. And as I said, edamame excel micronutritionally. They're the best source of folate on this list, which is essential for the creation of DNA and RNA. They're the best source of vitamin K, which is needed for blood clotting and bone building, and choline, which is used in cell membranes as well as brain and memory development. And edamame are among the best sources of vitamin B2, vitamin C, copper, magnesium, manganese, and phosphorus. Edamame are also a great source of isoflavins, antioxidants that reduce inflammation and are linked with reduced risks of cancer. They're also shown to reduce blood cholesterol levels, regulate blood sugar, and help combat or prevent osteoporosis and Alzheimer's disease. 
Now, edamame do have quite a few potential drawbacks, the first of which being that soy allergies are fairly common. Edamame are also shown to be higher than average in all of our four main anti-nutrients, so be sure to cook and soak them properly. And there's also many studies surrounding soy products and the potential negative effects they could have, including that soy is very commonly genetically modified, promotes suppression of thyroid function, especially in those with an already underactive thyroid gland, and contains compounds that could alter your testosterone and estrogen levels. Though the more I looked into it, the more I found conflicting results on these. At the end of the day, be careful when consuming edamame to make sure it's not having any adverse effects, but from a nutritional standpoint, edamame will take the first slot in our top tier. Fava beans, also known as broad beans, are a lower calorie bean with a lower than average micronutrition content. They're a good source of folate and manganese, but the main thing that makes fava beans unique is an amino acid called levodopa, which the body turns into the neurotransmitter dopamine. Dopamine is used in memory, mood, and motivation, and helps combat Parkinson's disease. The amount of levodopa found in fava beans can range from negligible to significant, with the highest concentrations typically found in younger beans. Fava beans are also shown to enhance antioxidant activity and be beneficial for bone health. Now, fava beans do have a unique downside as well. A severe reaction called favism can occur in individuals who lack an enzyme called G6PD. If somebody who lacks this enzyme eats fava beans and this occurs, the body's red blood cells break down faster than they can replace them. G6PD is one of the most common enzyme deficiencies, affecting an estimated 400 million people worldwide, and this can be life-threatening, so do not take it lightly. Fava beans also contain a higher amount of lectin so be sure to cook and soak them properly. While fava beans can give people a scare, roughly 95% of the population can eat them without a hitch. They're among the lowliest of the B-tier beans, though I do hear they go well with some liver and a nice Chianti. Great Northern Beans are a lower calorie bean with an average micronutrient profile. They're among the best sources of phosphorus, which is needed for bodily growth and repair, and the production of DNA and RNA. White beans, like Great Northern Beans, are also a good source of polyphenol antioxidants, which are known for combating inflammation, as well as resistant starch, which is shown to improve digestion, prevent diseases, and aid in weight loss. Great Northern Beans are shown to be higher in lectins and oxalates, but lower than average in tannins. Make sure to cook and soak them well. Great Northern Beans are a fine option to add to your meal plan, and I feel they best belong in the B tier. Jelly beans are the highest calorie item on this list, having the highest carb count and a practically non-existent micronutrient profile. They're easily the highest in sugar on this list, containing roughly 70 grams per 100 grams of added sugars. Added sugars are shown to cause weight gain, increase your risk of type 2 diabetes, increase your risk of heart disease, increase your risk of cancer, increase your risk of depression, accelerate the aging process by damaging collagen and elastin, lead to fatty liver, negatively impact dental health, accelerate cognitive cognitive decline, and lead to acne. Because of this, jelly beans are going to be going in the F tier. Honestly, Mother Nature really screwed the pooch with this one. Red kidney beans are an average calorie bean with an average micronutrient profile. While they're a good source of folate and manganese, where kidney beans really shine is with antioxidants. Kidney beans have the highest concentration of antioxidants on this list, mainly isoflavins and anthocyanins that protect against inflammation and chronic diseases. They're also among the highest in resistant starch, which is shown to improve digestion, prevent diseases, and aid in weight loss. Kidney beans are also shown to regulate blood sugar, improve heart health, and lower blood pressure. Now, red beans like kidney beans are shown to contain the most tannins, but they are lower in their oxalate concentration concentration. Cook and soak accordingly. Kidney beans are the most impressive bean on this list once you dig past macros and micros, and for that, I'm going to be placing them in the A tier. Lima beans are an average calorie bean with one of the more impressive micronutrient profiles. They're the best source of manganese on this list, which is used in the formation of bones, connective tissue, and certain hormones. They're also the best source of vitamin C, a powerful antioxidant that helps protect cells against the effects of free radicals, unstable molecules that damage cells and are shown to promote illness and aging, and potassium, which is needed to maintain normal fluid levels in the body's cells, as well as being one of the best sources of magnesium, copper, and molybdenum. Lima beans are also shown to stabilize blood sugar and promote heart health. Now, lima beans are shown to be among the highest in lectins, but among the lowest in tannins and oxalates. Still, cook and soak them thoroughly. Bang for your buck, lima beans do pack one of the more impressive nutrient profiles, and I feel they've earned a place in the A tier. Lupin beans, or just lupin, or lupini? 
are technically not a bean. What they are is easily the most protein-dense item on here when compared to calories with an average micronutrient content, hovering at around 16 grams of complete protein, meaning they contain sufficient amounts of all essential amino acids, lupin beans are one of the best plant-based sources of protein on Earth. They're also high in antioxidants like anthocyanins and quercetin to help combat free radicals. Lupin beans are shown to reduce inflammation and have a strong effect on reducing the risk of chronic diseases like heart disease, type 2 diabetes, and hypertension. Lupin beans are also shown to be lower in tannins, lectins, and phytic acid than your average bean, though this is not an excuse to skip cooking and soaking them. I believe lupin beans will become one of the faces of plant-based diets in the coming years, and I'm going to be placing them in the top tier. Mung beans are the lowest calorie bean on this list and have an average micro content. They're a good source of folate, and because they're commonly eaten sprouted, they're high in antioxidants including phenolic compounds, flavonoids, caffeic acid, and cinnamic acid, all of which combat inflammation and the effects of free radicals. Mung beans also contain a good amount of resistant starch and are shown to help reduce the risk of heart disease and stroke. Mung beans are shown to be higher in tannins, but lower in lectins and phytic acid still cook and soak them thoroughly. Mung beans would make for a fine addition to your meal plan and will be among the best in the B tier. Navy beans are a mid-calorie bean with an above average micronutrient profile. They're the best source of fiber on this list, which is used to regulate the digestive process. They're also among the best sources of vitamin B1 on this list, which helps the body generate energy from nutrients, while also being a good source of folate and manganese. Navy beans are a great source of polyphenols, antioxidants that have a strong anti-inflammatory effect, and white beans like navy beans are among the highest in resistant starch, which is shown to aid in proper digestion, prevent diseases, and help promote weight loss. Navy beans are high in oxalates and lectins, but are shown to contain the least amount of tannins. Cook and soak accordingly. Navy beans are a solid choice with their own unique health benefits, and I feel they deserve a spot in the A tier. Pink beans are a mid-calorie bean with an above-average micronutrient concentration. They're the highest in carbohydrates of any real bean on this list, as well as being the best source of vitamin B1, which helps the body generate energy from nutrients. They're also among the best sources of phosphorus and potassium on this list. Pink beans are one of the highest in antioxidants, including isoflavins and anthocyanins, and are shown to improve heart health and lower your risk of chronic diseases. Unfortunately, they are on the higher end of lectins, tannins, and oxalates. But when cooked and soaked properly, pink beans will do the body very good, and I believe they edged out in the A tier. Pinto beans are an average calorie bean with an above average micronutrient content. They're among the best sources of fiber and vitamin B6, and one of the best when it comes to antioxidants, polyphenols, and flavonoids, but especially camphorol, which has a powerful antioxidant effect. Pinto beans are shown to help manage blood cholesterol and blood sugar levels, promote gut bacteria, and combat insulin resistance. Pinto beans do have a higher tannin content, so they still need to be cooked and soaked accordingly. But pinto beans are among the healthiest options on this list, earning them a spot in the A tier. Refried beans are the lowest caloried item on this list, with a subpar micro content when compared to less treated beans. Refried beans are typically pinto beans, but sometimes black beans or red kidney beans that have been pan fried in lard and salt. They are typically among the best sources of vitamin C and selenium on this list, but they can vary wildly in regards to health and nutrition depending on how they're prepared. They are shown to improve heart health and gut health, but studies have shown that regularly eating refried beans can negatively impact your weight cholesterol, and blood pressure levels when compared to their less treated variants. And don't assume that refried beans are free of the anti-nutrients of the beans they're made of either. Refried beans are a unique specimen that fall just short of more natural sources. I'm going to place them in the C tier. Last on our list is soybeans, the more mature ones that is. Soybeans are the highest caloried real bean on this list, with the second highest micronutrient concentration only falling short of their immature selves. Soybeans are gram for gram the best source of protein on this list, and they provide a complete protein at that, meaning they provide all essential amino acids in sufficient amounts for the human body to use. They also have the highest concentration of fat, about 9 grams per 100 grams, mainly consisting of the polyunsaturated fat linoleic acid which is shown to mainly benefit heart health. Soybeans are also the best source on this list of iron, which is needed for hemoglobin and myoglobin, which are used for carrying oxygen throughout the body. Phosphorus, which is needed for bodily growth and repair and the production of DNA and RNA. Magnesium, which regulates muscle and nerve function and aids in protein, bone, and DNA creation. Copper, which aids in iron absorption and is good for bone health. And vitamin B2, which is used to convert carbohydrates into fuel as well as vitamin B6, 
calcium, and selenium. They contain a high amount of isoflavins, antioxidants that are associated with a reduced risk of cancers. Some of these isoflavins can be turned into a substance called a quoll in some people, which is shown to yield cardiovascular health benefits. Soybeans are full of phytoestrogens, which can mimic the effect of estrogen in the body, which tends to decline during menopause. Now, soybeans do have a number of potential negatives, the most prominent being that soy allergies are fairly common. Soybeans are also shown to have a higher concentration of lectins, phytic acid, and oxalates, so be sure to soak and cook them thoroughly. They're also one of the higher GMO foods these days. And the conflicting studies I mentioned about edamame regarding potential thyroid suppression and alterations to hormone levels should be brought up here as well. From a purely nutritional standpoint, soybeans are a top-tier bean without question, but considering some of the potential side effects and how they seem to impact different bodies in different ways, I can understand why you might have them down a tier or two. While none of these may be magical in the sense that if you put them in the ground, they'll grow a giant beanstalk, there's a reason why beans are a cornerstone of so many diets. As I said earlier, for the majority of the population, any of these beans in their natural state, when prepared properly, are going to do the body good. Feel free to experiment with different options as they provide unique flavors and health benefits, but you can always rest assured that they'll be providing you with the staples of protein, fibers, and various other nutrients essential for optimal bodily function. And I heard there was a link between beans and certain noises, but I'm not here to confirm or deny that one. Now, if you enjoyed the video, or at the very least learned a little something, I encourage you to subscribe because there's plenty more of these on the way. Also, let me know which food group you'd like to see me cover next, and remember that all I ask is that you do your own research and advocate for your own body. After all, you only get the one.